What was your biggest back quote we need to leave? Now, moment. Was 15 over 16 at a house party with my good friend, another girl. There were some gate crashers who turned up, which weren't unusual at London house parties, but these guys were older, and there was just a vibe. A girl I vaguely knew, was very drunk, and being surrounded by them, and I asked her, if she was okay, and she told me to fuck off, I'm fine. I looked at my friend, and said to her I'm gonna call my mum, and dad to come get me do you want a lift, my parents were always amazing, and said to me that, if I was at a party or out, and for any reason didn't want to be where I was I could call them, and they would come and get me, my parents turned up coats on over pyjamas and took us both home. Apparently half an hour after we left, someone was stabbed, the girl we had asked earlier was sexually assaulted, and lots of stuff was stolen, and people beaten up and held up at Niffer Point. When I was 15, a friend and I went for a lot of walks around town, small town, around 5, 6k people. We were going to the Siba cafe in town to meet a few friends and we often took different streets to get places, just to keep it interesting. We were about to go to Main Street off one of the side streets and a man on a bicycle approached us. He got off his bike and asked us a couple small talk questions. Something didn't seem right about him, he was probably mid 40s. We both kept inching away, but didn't want to come off as too rude, so we answered about the weather or traffic. Then he paused, and we said we had to go, and he said, and I'll never forget it, you look so young, I don't want to get in trouble, but I need to touch someone, I just need to touch you, you should come with me. And he started rambling. I just felt terror, couldn't even speak. I grabbed my friend's hand and turned. We sprinted the rest of the way to the cafe, and as soon as we were inside we asked to use the phone. I called my mom to pick us up, while my friend told the worker what happened and what the guy looked like. A month later I got my first cell phone. About two months ago I'd stayed up past my usual bedtime, and as soon as I got in bed I smelled something odd, and was hearing some inconsistent banging and clattering from downstairs. I don't live in a great neighborhood so none of this was unusual, but I got out of bed to check anyway, and saw flames licking up the side of the building. Yelled at my wife to get out of bed, and threw on some clothes and we hightailed it out. Our building has a shared wall with the next, and that one had an apartment on the ground, floor fully engulfed by the time we made it outside, ended up condemning the whole building. I was the first one, to call 9, double 1. Have been jerking myself awake in the night pretty consistently since then. Grocery shopping with my grandma. She's tired, normal for her, but she's getting a bit slower and dragging her leg more than usual. At the checkout counter I saw her face was a little droopy and I said we are leaving now and going to her. They gave her a bottle of water for the car ride which she ended up choking on and vomiting up all the water. Called ahead to her, so they were ready, and they took care of her as soon as possible. She was having a stroke and they were able to help her quick enough, so that she didn't have any long-lasting issues. Was in Mexico City with family including two daughters. Grabbed a cab on the street around 10pm, to take us back to the hotel. I was somewhat familiar with the area, since we had been there 4 or 5 days already. Cabby totally passes the hotel district and starts heading away from the part of town we were in. Streets were getting more and more residential. I demanded that he pull over, and we GTFO, and walked back to the hotel, probably 3 or 4 miles. He was probably just padding the fare, but I was not going to take a chance on being kidnapped so we flew. I was on a date with a girl hiking a trail system that I knew like the back of my hand. Something felt weird, but I shook it. We went in around sunset. We were going to swim in one of the deep pools in the creek. Maybe two miles into the trail I get the feeling again, and she's talking her head off, but I was just listening to everything around me. I told her to stop talking, and she looked at me very concerned. I just put my finger to my lips and listened. I heard something familiar, but I couldn't place it. We never stopped walking. 
we came to the arroyo just before the creek pool, and I heard it again, by this time I knew. I told her we were going to walk to the clearing, where the arroyo was at and turn around. She told me she heard something weird. As we came to the clearing we stood there like statues, dead silent. Her nails cut my arm from gripping it so hard. Then around 15 feet from us, the biggest mountain lion I've ever seen crossed the clearing with two of its young. She looked at us, and as our eyes met, my soul left my body, and I felt her grip tighten around my arm even tighter. She stopped and so did her babies. I'm guessing she sized us up, and then just kept going. The babies kept turning around looking at us, but ultimately they just slowly crossed the top of the hill and that was that. We turned around and told everyone we saw on the way in that there was three mountain lions on the trail. They all turned around and left. That was the first time I was ever scared out of nature. I didn't have a handgun on me. I had been there a hundred times. She told me the sound she heard was a deep purring. And that was what I kept hearing also. I just hadn't put it together. I was a teenager and my male neighbor hired my preteen sister and I to clean his apartment. I was in the middle of doing the dishes when the guy started rambling about he didn't want to hurt us, but he had a good 12 inches I told my sister we had to go now, and she argued that we were not done and wouldn't get paid. I convinced her to leave, and we ran home where I told my dad what happened. Dad went and talked to the guy. I don't know what transpired between them, but later neighbor guy comes over with a black eye, apologized and paid us. About a decade ago, I was driving my mitre with a friend to a track about 4 hours from home. We left after dinner the night before, so we could wake up there and get an early start. About an hour from our destination, 11pm a crazy summer storm hit, heavy rain, high wind gusts, lots of debris. I told my buddy that early 90s windshield wipers couldn't keep up, I couldn't see shit, and I just felt like I was white knuckling the steering wheel. I decided to hit the exit, we'd get some late night food at a waffle house, and wait out the storm. We sat down, and I had a TV in sight, and I was casually watching. Almost immediately, a weather map came up and showed a tornado pass right over where we would have been a few minutes later had I not exited. I was in a mall in Indonesia and two tourists seemed to be having problems communicating with the cashier at a bookstore, so I helped translate. They wanted to buy me drinks to thank me. Told them it's not necessary and I have to get back to my mom soon. They told me to meet them for dinner. Told them I have to have dinner at home. They told me to sneak out and meet them after dinner. At this point, a bookstore staff noticed something was wrong and went up to question them. My sister and I dashed off while they were distracted. Continued wandering around the mall and realized they were following us. To see if we were just paranoid, we ducked into a lingerie store. Since we figured two men won't usually need to go lingerie shopping together. They followed us in. Ran so quickly back to the jewelry store our mom was at. The store had intimidating security guards and I guess that stopped those guys. I was 11, my sister was 10. New Year's Eve in Moscow. I, dark haired brown man, was drinking with my so, blonde white woman, in a bar getting friendly with some locals who tried their best to speak English. So friendly that one of them gave us a matryoshka doll that he was going to give to his mother later that night. They seemed a little too friendly, and maybe they just were, but at one point I went to order more drinks and the bartender, who had been watching and serving us, gave me a stern look and said, you should leave, now. I found this a little strange, and unexpected so naturally tried to question what he meant, but his face was drop dead serious. He looked at the friendly group, then at my gf, then to me, and repeated his words. I didn't really want to take any chances in Russia, and wanted to see another bar anyway, so I grabbed my girl, the doll and promptly left. Driving to Disney with hubs and two little kids, 4 and 5. Stopped at a gas station in Tifton, get at about 10pm. Wander in a little bleary eyed with the two kids looking for the bathroom. Clark looks at me funny and points. While I'm in there I hear she's got two babies with her man. Just let them pee and go. 
I grab both kids and walk straight back to the car with only a small head nod to the clerk. Hubs was done pumping gas and about to go in himself. I yelled for everyone to get in the car. I would explain later. As soon as we pulled out I called 911. The operator told me they were already en route and to vacate the scene. Took my info and wished us a fun trip. Walked into a gas station robbery with two little kids. Peed and left with no issues. Bad gas wasn't that bad of a guy and let us go.